Shalom. This is Satellite Bible Atlas video number 7, commentary for maps 110 and 111, the Shvelah of Judah. The Shvelah of Judah is a buffer region between the hill country of Judah and the coastal plain. This is the Shvelah! The Shvelah is the main point of conflict between the Philistines and the Israelites. The word Shvelah means foothills or lowlands. The foothills are bisected by wide valleys. The foothills protect the western side of the hill country of Judah. Here is an aerial photograph of the Elah Valley in the Shvelah. For security reasons, cities and towns were built on the hills. The ruins of the biblical town of Azekah are on this hill, while the routes ran in the wide valleys bisecting the hills. The Shvela has rich agriculture, especially from trees, like grapevines, sycamore and olive trees. Grains and vegetables grow in the rich soil of the valleys. Note the elevation of the Shvela, tucked between the coastal plain and the hill country. At around 1,300 feet above sea level, the Shvela is approximately half the height of the hill country. Find the Shvela on map 12.3. Here is the relatively flat coastal plain. To the east, the higher, rugged hill country. Situated between them, about 40 miles long and 8 miles wide, is the Shvela. Note the routes in the wide valleys that divide the foothills. On map 110, take a look at the coastal plain. The Philistines settled as a nation here in about 1200 BC. The main cities of the Philistines were situated along the two branches of the International Coastal Highway. Along the coastal branch are Gaza, Ashkelon, and Ashdod. Along the inland branch of the highway were Gath and Ekron. Note the hill country of Judah to the east, and the buffer zone Shvela. Now let's examine the Shvela valleys and routes. Map 111 is a close-up of the Shvela of Judah region. On the map, shaded in darker green, are five wide valleys that run predominantly east to west, connecting the hill country to the coastal plain. An earlier video examined how the wide Agilon Valley, the northernmost Shvela Valley, functions as the main route from the coast to Jerusalem. The route was guarded by the city of Gezer in the Shvela Hills. The next valley, running parallel but south of the Agilon, is the Sorek Valley. Note the towns of Zorah and Eshtaol on the north side of the Sorek Valley, where the Spirit of the Lord first moved upon Samson. Across the valley, to the south, is the important town of Bet Shemesh. To the west is Timnah, and near where the Sorek opens into the coastal plain is the Philistine town of Ekron. Like the Agilon, the Sorek Valley is an east-west route, connecting the Philistine plain to the hill country. From near Bet Shemesh and Eshtaol, Routes into the rugged hill country travel on ridges. Let's take a look at the Sorg Valley from the ruins of ancient Bet Shemesh. We're standing here at Bet Shemesh overlooking the Sorg Valley. It was along the Sorg Valley that the Ark of the Covenant returned from the Philistines to Judea. Also behind me you can see the town of Zorah. This is where the Spirit of the Lord first moved upon Samson. It was Samson, you'll recall, who later was able to kill 1,000 Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. Map 4.8 shows that many of the events in the life of Samson occurred in the Sorg Valley. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson between Zorah and Eshtaol. He killed a lion on a journey to Timnah. The lion had probably come up out of the thickets of the Sorg River, which runs through the valley. Note the proximity of Zorah to Timnah where Samson saw a Philistine gal. We're at the biblical town of Timnah where Samson saw a Philistine girl that he wanted to marry. <laughs> the Sorek Valley is the setting for the return of the Ark of the Covenant to Judah. The Philistines had captured the Ark in a battle at Aphek and brought it to their city Ashdod. The Philistines, like so many others through the ages, believed they had subdued the God of Israel, but they were wrong. The ark was sent to Gath and then to Ekron, from where two cows pulled it on a cart straight up the Sorek Valley to Bet Shemesh. From Bet Shemesh, it was brought up to Kiryat Jarim in the hill country, 
where it stayed 20 years until Samuel led Israel in a national repentance. South of the Sorek Valley is the Elah Valley. Note the cities of Azeka, Soko, and Adulam. To the west, where the Elah Valley spills into the coast, is Gath, home of the giant Goliath. Between Azeka and Soko, on the north side of the Elah Valley, is a ruin called Hirbet Kiyafa, where recent excavations have exposed an ancient Israelite town, perhaps dating to either King Saul or David. Let's take a look at the Elah Valley looking east from Azekah. We're at the ancient site of Azekah looking out over the Elah Valley. This is where the Philistines were encamped when David fought Goliath between Azekah and Soko. And now from Soko looking back west. We're at Socal in Judah. Behind me on the hill is Azekah. The Philistines encamp between Socal and Azekah, this side of the Elah Valley, when David fought Goliath. This is the brook in the Elah Valley where David would have come down to collect his five stones before going to fight Goliath. As map 5-3 shows, David fought Goliath in the Elah Valley. Again, the Shvelah proved to be the buffer zone where Philistines battled Israelites. We suggest the battle occurred just below Soko. The victory confirmed that David was chosen by God to be king in Israel, and that the God of Israel saves neither by the sword nor spear. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled on the road of Sha'arim to Gath and Ekron. The next valley in the Shvela is today called the Guvrin Valley. Note the towns of Mereshet Gath and Maresha. The prophet Micah lived in this region. The cities in the southern Shvela are important for confronting enemies from Egypt. King Asa of Judah learned that the Lord could be trusted when a huge attacking army was routed, turned, and fled at Maresha. Because of the wickedness of King Ahaz of Judah, the prophet Micah witnessed Philistine incursions into the Shvelah. But Micah said this was just the beginning of difficulties. Israel and Judah's real trouble would come from mighty Assyria. On map 110, note one more valley in the Shvelah, last but not least. Here is one of Judah's most important cities, Lachish. Ancient Lachish covers over 30 acres. As seen on map 3-6, Canaanite Lachish was conquered by the Israelites under Joshua. Map 7-7 seven, seven shows how Lachish played a role in one of the most dramatic interventions of the Lord on behalf of Jerusalem. The event is described in three books of the Bible, Kings, Chronicles, and Isaiah. This is Lachish. Tel Lachish, the city where Sennacherib of Assyria conquered in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. The mighty empire of Assyria, under King Sennacherib, around 700 BC, controlled the entire ancient Near East to the border of Egypt. Tiny Judah, under King Hezekiah, decided to revolt from Assyrian rule. Sennacherib came to subdue Hezekiah. The Assyrians first secured the coast then began sieging the buffer zone Shvela, especially Lachish. Sennacherib boasted of making Hezekiah a prisoner in Jerusalem like a bird in a cage. Sennacherib was particularly proud of his conquest of Lachish. He decorated a large room in his palace in Nineveh, depicting the siege and conquest of the city. Here Sennacherib is depicted with an inscription that reads, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, king of the universe, seated on his throne as the booty of Lachish comes before him. But then the Lord dramatically intervened in the affairs of men. In response to the faith of Isaiah and Hezekiah, and as evidence that the God of Israel is the Lord of all, the angel of the Lord decimated 185,000 Assyrian troops in one night. Sennacherib retreated to his capital in Nineveh, where later his own sons killed him. 110 years after the Assyrian attempt to conquer Judah, the Babylonian Empire tried to do the same. This time, there was no divine protection for Judah. 
Like Assyria, Babylon had to conquer the buffer zone Shvela to reach Jerusalem. The cities of Azekah and Lachish appear in both the biblical and archaeological record. We're standing here in the gate room of Lachish, where some potsherds were found mentioning the two cities Asecha and Lachish. Now these are the same two cities mentioned by the prophet Jeremiah and they were the only two ones left standing when the Babylonians sieged Judah. With the cities of the buffer zone Shvela conquered, Babylon stepped up into the hill country and destroyed Jerusalem. To review, note on map 111 a route that runs north-south through the Shvela. It's called the Diagonal Route. It runs from the city of Ajalon to Eshtoel and Bet Shemesh in the Sorg Valley, then to Azekah in the Elah Valley, through Bet Guvrin to Lachish. Then take a look at map 6-1, which shows the fortifications of Solomon's son Rehoboam. Many of these towns will sound familiar now. You can understand better why Rehoboam fortified the towns in the Shvela, Ajalon, Zora, Gath, Azekah, Sokal, Adolam, Mereshet Gath, Meresha, and Lachish. The writer of Chronicles records that these fortresses did Rehoboam no good when he forsook the word of the Lord. We're at Soko, where the giant Goliath probably taunted the Israelites who were standing over there. Behind us is the hill that has the ruins of Gath, which is the hometown of Goliath the Philistine. We're at the caves of Adullam, where David hid from Saul. Very wow. Thank you.